news but i thought i would mention it anyway um the legendary dj assault right from the fucking you know legendary ass ass titties titties tune that most of you guys are familiar with if you've been out on the dance floor anytime soon um posted this screenshot on his instagram account that features an email he received from Hor, the legendary bathroom in Berlin where everyone goes and plays, essentially the the new age boiler room where careers are basically broken and some careers are birthed. And um, he was obviously booked to play there. And out of the blue, someone from Hor decided to email him and say, hey, you're not playing there anymore because we saw you post some dicey dicey memes and we don't want to have you play and it's an interesting debate around it because i didn't actually see the memes or the things that whore saw that would make them feel like dj assault wasn't a ally or wasn't somebody that could be trusted to come into their space or then they didn't align with their values i didn't see it when i browsed his instagram page and you can do it yourself his instagram account is dj assault number one dj assault number one or one word on instagram you'll find him on there you just find loads of like you know for lack of a better term you know all, all respect to my elders you just find a lot of like boomer like memes and stuff that's all it basically feels like to me um, i didn't really understand why they would get offended by it especially when it's somebody that is a such a you know a founding member uh, of this scene of ours that we all enjoy a founding member of ghetto tech which i would think is incredibly popular over there in berlin specifically within a particular lgbtq crowd and stuff they seem to love that sort of stuff so it'd be very weird for them to kind of have a problem with having the person who maybe birthed the music or created the music that they're now profiting from or enjoying or they've basically based their entire lives from it just seems odd why they can completely kind of you know not involve him and say that he doesn't align with what they're about when they still play his music that's the thing that doesn't really make sense to me but anyway he posted the caption as follows it says road two of berlin v dj assault we can play these games as long as you like they tried to get the show cancelled a few weeks ago in berlin that i played that didn't work now naturally i'm smart enough to get 100 percent of the fee up front you can't hurt me this is only hurt in the music scene and the club goers I didn't know that was a thing. You see that? You see that's quite awesome. I didn't know that was a thing that you could get your DJ fee up front if you just like press them. If they really want you, they'll give it to you. Oh yeah, that kind of reminds me of Six Nine and Steve will do it beef. That's happening at the moment. Steve will do it formerly or still part of the Nelt Boys and Six Nine, the rapper that you guys all should know. They got having a bit of beef at the moment, and I think it stems from essentially Steve will do it arranging a deal with Rumble, the live streaming platform, for him and Six Nine to stream together. And you know, no, the deal was in the millions of dollars and stuff. And he agrees to the deal. Everything's good. Six Nine agrees to join Steve will do it on streams, um, on Rumble, um, to fulfill that deal and to get paid. But then unbeknownst to steve will do it six nine reaches out to rumble and manages to get however much he's meant to get paid let's say two million he manages to get that in full from rumble and then of course six nine being a rapper that he is didn't follow through with the promise and didn't do the deal or didn't do the flipping um what he was what he agreed to do with rumble and now steve will do it is in debt of however much money that fee was whether it was two million three million whatever doesn't matter and what i was surprised by was like he was able to get that money from rumble without delivering on any of the agreements that they had beforehand and usually when it comes to djing from my experience even when i played in clubs or i played in small bars you usually get your money after the fact even if it's in cash you usually get it when you finish your set or if you have to do an invoice you send it after the fact so the fact that some people can get dj fees ahead of time is pretty sick but i guess it obviously applies to certain caliber of djs you can probably get 50 percent up front and stuff um and if you're an artist who's balancing but you know who's jumping who's living from gig to gig having that 50 percent up front can be a real game changer and can allow you to sort of like you know sometimes maybe even go to your gigs or maybe pick up a cheeky eight ball before you start so i get that but that's still surprising to see that he was able to do that but big up him regardless you can't hurt me this is only going to hurt the music scene it continues here and goers the venue list is below fuck them and all the way family members i will never um bow down to the work bs so this isn't whore whore didn't pay him it's a, another venue called zena in berlin they're the ones that paid him up front 100 percent the fee and then later on cancelled the dj booking because of whatever they must have saw online then whore followed up the same week i guess and also cancelled his dj appearance over there and they read an email that said the following hi craig i hope this message finds you well 
over the past few days, we've received feedback and concern from our community and the venue regarding specific content on your social media platforms. As an organization committed to promoting exclusivity and diversity, we take such concerns seriously because, I'm sorry, and believe it is essential to address them in a responsible manner. Imagine saying this to a black person who founded Gettotech. <laughs> This only happens to black straight men, by the way. I don't know if DJ So is straight. I'm just going to throw it out there. Maybe he is. But you don't see this happening to any other, um, you know, uh, demographic in the dance music scene. It's one of those weird things that exist in the dance music scene that people don't really talk about a lot, especially even in Berlin. There is definitely a... Um, there's definitely a difference in the way you get treated out there if you're like a... If you're like a black... If, you, if you're like a black guy that looks like Eve's Timor, or if you're like a black boy that, you know, looks like a kid from Top Boy, you probably won't get into a lot of parties over there. You have to like kind of, you know, funk it up for them a little bit. You know what I mean? It's really annoying. It kind of is something that always grates me, especially when I'm queuing up to go to clubs and stuff. And I see, you know, what I would deem to be regular looking black dudes not getting in at certain clubs because they don't have a certain look to them. Yeah, you know I mean, it's just annoying. It just really is annoying. Our responsibility to ensure that our events align with our values and principles. After careful consideration, we have decided to cancel the booking for your DJ performance at our event on September 23rd. The interesting thing, though, about whore in general, I'm not too sure if this is um something specific to Berlin as a scene. There definitely is a lack overall of black DJs playing there, especially male DJs. I don't think there's a lot. You might see the odd girl here and there, but... There's not a lot of like black dudes playing on that station. I wonder why it is. Maybe it's the lineups as well. Because I remember that being a thing I was speaking about before about fold and stuff. Like, I wonder if it's just that people that look like me don't actually play that type of music, which is always annoying, right? When you go to these type of places and you get booked and stuff, and no one knows who you are, like most people don't know who I am, and you rock up, they don't think you're gonna be playing the, the tunes that they like, and they get nervous. They think you're gonna step up and start playing fucking, I don't know future and ama piano and um you know and fucking emma honcho and shit right they get really scared and then you go on there and you start playing everything that they obviously know and love and stuff that they haven't heard of and suddenly they're like trying to suck your dick and it feels really patronizing you're like go fuck yourself do you know what I mean you want to tell them to go and fucking you know stick their smiles up their asses but you want to be fair and say that maybe it's not their fault because you know in the scene that they're in there just isn't a lot of people that look like me that will play that type of music so i get it but when it comes to dj soul that's a different thing do you know what i mean he's a fucking legend you know i mean this is not me playing for like 50 euros in the fucking dive bar this is a person that essentially has birthed and created an entire scene that all of these guys and girls are somewhat profiting from right the work that he kind of put in back in the day is probably the reason why a platform like whore even exists so the fact that he can't play because he posts some cheeky dicey you know whatever memes on social media is insane unless the memes were actually offensive if they were just jokes and they were just a bit of banter or whatnot i don't see how that's an issue and also considering how important social media is to booking people i find it really odd that they would book him and not have and not do any due diligence not even look for his social media feed and shit which tells you everything about the scene right they make it seem like oh get your social media in order it's really important have your mix done a certain way send labels this all this shit right but really the truth of the matter is if your song bangs everyone will sign it you know when your song bangs everyone's gonna sign it if you're a good DJ, eventually, if you play enough, people will notice you, recommend you, and you'll get signed to a booking agency. It's not about sending things to people, do you know what I mean? And if you've got enough clout, people like Hall will obviously reach out to you or you'll get put in contact with them to do a set. That's basically how it actually works because these guys didn't do any due diligence, no research. They didn't kind of, you know, vet him in any way. They just booked him because he's a legend. And then when they checked his Instagram or when they were sent specifically posts from his Instagram from their community, they got scared and cancelled him. I don't really blame Hall. I blame the fucking narcs that were tagging them and taking screenshots of his posts and sending them in. You have to be a real loser to post those type of things to a platform and say, he can't play here, blah, 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 blah. You have to be a real fucking loser to do that. A real bona fide loser to take screenshots from Instagram and send them to a label, a flipping radio station, a sponsor, whatever it may be, a brand, and try and get people canceled because you don't like something that they post on Instagram, especially a meme do you know what I mean if it's like him on on video you know fucking preaching hate to a certain group of people fair enough different conversation but if it's just him posting fucking silly little memes boomer memes facebook fucking memes right stuff that you would find on um 
what's that fucking dj page on facebook that everyone fucking likes all that sort of shit why are you that offended it's not that deep i don't get it um but I wonder if it's just something that they're trying to do going forward. They want to just, you know, remove themselves from any dicey situations, which is a shame, really, because I like Hall. I think it's still one of the better live streaming platforms out there. And I really am eager to find out, you know, when my turn will finally come to play that place. I did have a slight opportunity to play there during the pandemic. Um, I kind of got in there early, I think, when it maybe launched and I had some good emails back and forth, initial ones. And then I think as I kept as I kept delaying and emailing them back, my fault, like a couple of days will go by. Obviously, then the demand for them to have certain people there go went up and then suddenly I wasn't getting any replies back anymore. That was a really sad thing, to be fair, because it did look like I had the opportunity to go and play there. But after a while, it went it kind of went radio silent and I'm not really somebody to chase. So I just kind of left it. But again, these things are, you know, by the by, as soon as you get them as soon as you get a bit of clout someone's gonna want to let, let you play there so i'm sure my time will come so let me actually check the comments and see what people say because i still don't know what the meme was i want to know what the meme was but let me see the comments and see what people said uh big up my guy he valencia he said these people man the thing about being a black man with liberal and leftist spaces is that if you say the right words you're a poc but if you talk loud or you're just another man, this scene is run by people who use a virtue signaling to reinforce the same old system of racism. Exactly. That's something I've noticed a lot going to all these events I go to, queer, you know, events led by queer people, events led by LGBTQ plus people, events laid for the gays, by the gays. You realize quite often that being a black straight male in these spaces, you do come across like an absolute animal. Like, Maybe you are one, fair enough, but people don't really treat you the way you would think you'd be treated in these spaces. You're kind of the enemy in a weird way, or they're kind of expecting the worst from you. Then if you're cool, then it's fine, but you don't really get open. You don't really get welcomed with open arms. It's a very interesting space. That's why when you see a lot of these events where they say, oh, it's a BIPOC lineup, they usually mean just BIPOC in terms of like women or females or whatever right they don't really mean it with men at all it's not to do with men especially if you're not straight um, especially if you are straight sorry so that's a really unfortunate side of this whole um inclusion thing that we have going on at the moment in representation as great as it is especially in london i always say you know the best parties come from that community of people because they don't really you know they don't tend to kind of go for the easy peasy bookings or they go for the bait spaces they have really cool production like i think of stuff like inferno right they spend a lot of money putting on that show they have fucking performers performing they have loads of artwork they have you know just mad madness goes on in there and it's just a basically a club night but they obviously invest a lot into it so those are usually way funner than going to a fucking standard night in fabric but you do you know feel like as a straight black dude walking into a space you do feel like you are stepping into a space where people naturally will have their back up against you uh, or their back up when you come in they'll be on tender hooks and you know you're definitely not super welcome but you're also not told to fuck off you know it's kind of a weird space you occupy it continues here let me read some other comments um canceling an outspoken black artist with a massive discography in the name of exclusivity has to be one of the most funniest plays of all time the levels of clown world just keep reaching higher and again i don't blame um whore i think it's more so the snitches that did this because they had to act afterwards right because they kind of probably felt like the whole internet was saying this thing when it wasn't it's probably just a small minority fair but you know there still needs to be a little bit more of a people need to need to just hold down people that founded you know certain things i just think certain people should just be you just you should occupy a space if you're the person that's responsible for crafting this music that we're all kind of profiting and enjoying from you shouldn't be you know judged on the parameters that some of us regular folks are because you're the one that founded this shit you, you should just you should be in a in a privileged position in that regard but maybe i'm in the minority by saying that because it sounds crazy um Another person here says, why are they doing this? Sorry, I'm out of the loop. Um, let's see what people say to reply because I also want to know what the exact meme was because I, I, I can't see it. Okay, we don't, want to, we don't want to check this guy's profile. Please don't. Let's see. I'm guessing because of some of the lyrics on his song. Seems very weird. Now, it's more to do. It's more so the wild. So, okay, here's why he said it. It's more so the wild ass stance on posting fascist right wing memes. The Fox News tip. Oh, come on, bro. You can't post memes about that shit. Is he saying it's his opinion though? You can't post a meme about Donald Trump or about what's that thing called? Um, Pepe the Frog and shit because you're going to be seen as a fascist or a right winger. The scene is fucking lame, bro. So fucking lame. 
everyone is so fucking pussified it's incredible and the funny thing about it is that i would i would wager some of our biggest most illustrious well-regarded artists and djs in the scene probably hold some very dicey political views and opinions i bet you especially the ones who come from wealth, especially the ones who've been rich for a while, you know, because money does change a lot of people's political and ideological beliefs. So it would definitely stand, with, you know, to reason that those guys and girls at the top echelons, even the ones that play at all the coolest clubs, if you had to sat them down in private and ask them some some things, you know, if you, if you ask them what they think of Taiwan and shit, they might have some very interesting replies for you. Um, anyway, it continues. Now, it's more to do with the wild ass stance on posting fascist right wing memes and Fox News tidbits about the government. Not saying people don't have opinions and my views may differ greatly from the assaults on that matter. The fact that we can't have a conversation on both sides have polarized true progress by communicating. Um, by communicating is a strong testament that the system is not working. Exactly. So that's basically why he got cancelled because he was posting some Fox News and allegedly fascist right wing memes on his instagram <laughs> absolutely stupid another person says um not like right wing rhetoric sorry oh so you're you're so oh so you're right not like right wing rhetoric burning merchandise from companies making books legal but yes please keep saying one side does yeah true okay well, that's a back and forth i don't want to get involved in um what what it was and what it was become lamentable another says i can't believe these berlins are censoring you but i'm so grateful for these germans because it proves america is sort of fresh okay cool um are you out here saying wild shit and i'm not seeing it like your name is dj assault and your biggest song is ass and titties and they're booking you in the first place who the fuck is in charge of this ed <laughs> is exactly true promoting exclusivity and diversity unless you're different from them exactly exactly um, and just forget all that shit. Just forget that shit. Just him, DJ Assault. He's a fucking legend. How dare you? Yo, Germany's going through some real crazy times right now, bro. Like the whole country's caught up in this ideological mess that hardly makes sense to regular folks. Smart people are actually packing their bags and leaving because of the nonsense. I don't think that's true. That's probably a stretch. People aren't leaving because of, you know, DJ Assault getting, you know, cancelled to go and hoff and says, let's, let's relax. Speaking the truth is a crime now. If you're not part of the specific group, they silence you. It's wild. Divide and conquer is the name and agenda. I don't know what Scooby you're talking about. Okay. This whole people feeling like they're martyrs and like they're fucking malcolm x because they're not allowed to say certain things on social media also needs to relax okay let's just temper it both sides are freaking out but let's not go around thinking we're fucking martin luther king yeah you know i mean it's not that deep um another one says have you not heard your music before i truly don't know what they're referring to cowardly behavior to call out specific issue they have and leave it vague no i think he knows why they they cancelled him it's just not a kind of legit reason enough to counter someone like him because again he's a fucking legend but hey um dj assault got cancelled from whore um again maybe speaks to the overall you know vibe in the scene at the moment maybe who knows let's see how that kind of rolls on and hopefully it gets sorted in the end and i hope this isn't like a kind of band that he's going to now kind of feel from berlin overall hopefully this is just like a specific thing a one-off occasion maybe they've spoken about it behind the scenes who